Hi, I'm Scott Jones, the uh, editor of the Martian Migraine Press uh, anthology for 2016, Cthulhu Sattva, Tales of the Black Gnosis. And I've been interviewing uh, the authors that, uh, that I chose uh, for, the, uh, for the anthology over the past week. And tonight I have with me uh, Christy Demeester, uh, whose uh, story, The Wicked Shall Come Upon Him, uh, is uh, one of the one of the final tales in uh, in the anthology, and I put it towards the back because that's what you do. <laughs> you, you you take the really powerful pieces and you slam them, slam them in at the back, and that, that's that's that, that's that's really what I felt about your piece. It, it was it was it was a it was a no brainer when it came in, uh, Christy. It's, it just had that uh, it has a it has a powerful melancholy to it, and well, uh, I, I, I really I really liked it. And uh, yeah, I was wondering if you could uh, if you could tell us where wh wh where you're talking to us from. Sure, I'm 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 down in Atlanta, and that's nice. yeah, that's how you say it if you're from here, Atlanta. Atlanta. There's no T. No Am I doing it right, Atlanta? Atlanta. If Atlanta. You're Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. And of course, I say I'm from Atlanta. I'm I'm actually a little north. <laughs> okay. But you just you pick whatever the closest city is, and just you're from there. Gotcha. But, uh, down in Georgia and raring to go. <laughs> All right, fantastic. What can you tell us about uh, what, what can you tell us about the the wicked shall come upon him? What was your what was your process uh, when uh, what is your process generally? But if you could speak to uh, if you could speak to that story specifically, that'd be great too. Oh, absolutely. Um, generally, when it comes to story ideas, um, I, I sit down with with really no idea of where I'm going to end up or where I'm going to go. Sometimes there's an image. Um, sometimes there, the title will come first. A lot of the times it's just the first line that will get embedded in my head. And I start rattling around with it and try to just see where it takes me. But for, for the, the wicked come upon him, it was an image of, of someone peeling an apple with a razor blade, mm -hmm. which is something that one of the characters does in the story. And at first, I thought that the the protagonist would be that person. Would would be the person who who's peeling this apple with a razor blade, and what while well, it's really dark outside. And when I when I started the story initially, I started I started there with with that person as the protagonist. But the further that I got into it, I realized this this is not her story. This is this is someone else's story. Mm -hmm. And so it was a slow development where I knew that I wanted it to be. And there, there is an encroaching something. There's some kind of force that, that that's coming. And what happens when you give in to that and you don't really get what you expect? Uh, you have this hope that this external force or this external dot, whatever you want to call it, is going to solve the problem that has happened because of the way the world has crumbled around you because these things are coming and you think that it's going to be fixed and it's just not fixed. Um, and so for that one, it was a very image heavy start to that story. And, and I also, I want a lot of that sense of, it was, I don't usually do a male perspective. I did with this story, but wanted that sense of loss, even when everything is going to hell basically. Yeah. Yeah, that absolutely. Was, it was that first image, but then it just unraveled from there. Well, it's such a it's such a powerful image to start with. I mean, you know, the particularly in terms of of the anthology, which is you know, I, as, as you know, I was basically focusing on the more uh, you know spiritual aspects of the of the you know so called Cthulhu mythos. Right. And so to to throw in an apple there, <laughs> <laughs> you know that that has that's uh, that has some heavy uh, proto. Uh, uh, Christian uh, overtones, mm -hmm. undertones, tones in general, uh, but then of course you have you know apples that are significant throughout you know uh, the history of storytelling. I mean, just as an obvious example, Snow White. Mm -hmm. You know that was a that was a formative. I think that was probably a formative experience for most people is watching watching the Disney version and you know having the witch you know here. <laughs> and this it's the same kind it's the same kind of same kind of feeling. Uh, uh, with, with your story, uh, yeah, 
I, I, I really like it. I think people are really going to enjoy it. <laughs> you've, you've had a, you've had a number of, uh, you've had a number of, uh, uh, writing. It's been a big, big year for you already, hasn't it? Can you yeah. speak about some of your, uh, some of your, uh, accomplishments in the, in the past little bit? Yeah, it has been, um, 2016 has been really good to me. Um, and, and I, I'd made a deal with myself last summer that I would finally finish my first novel. And so came up with a schedule, was very regimented. And then once it was finished and I put it aside to let it rest before I came back for edits, I just, I kept, I could, I had to keep the regiment up. I couldn't fall out of the regiment because it was, it just had become such a process. And so I just, I kept up with this thousand words a day and just started doing short stories. And so for 2016, I have been really ecstatic. Just the, the, the stories that have been accepted in certain places. I mean, of, and, and it felt very much like not an overnight kind of thing. Cause I've been writing for 10 years. And trying to, you know, publishing or trying to publish for 10 years, but all of a sudden where there was just this flurry of really great acceptances of, of I've been trying to get into Apex for forever. Yep. <laughs> you know, rejections on rejections on rejections. And I, I admire what they do so much. And so placing a story with them was such a huge moment. And then um, I know that like the, since the start of the year, there's, there's been some acceptances from Black Static and from That's the right. Talk. and Year's Best Word Fiction Volume Three took a, took a story that had originally been published in Three Lobed Three Lobed Burning Eye. There's been some anthology acceptances and some other kind of exciting things I can't talk about. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> haven't been announced. Um, the acceptance from you was such a, was such an exciting thing because. I didn't think I'd ever sell this story, and I've had I've, I've, I've just I've had it for a while, right? And I I had gotten a lot of almost but not quite from people of eh, it, it works this way, but we don't think it's going to work that way. And so when I saw when I saw the submission call, I said, I really feel like that's going to fit. Yeah, and I think that's going to work. And so I was ecstatic when I got that. So. <laughs> He has been, I mean, I don't want to jinx the rest of the year, but has been really good. And I'd love. I don't, I, I don't think you can jinx. I mean, with, 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 with the kind of schedule I think you've got, I mean, that's, uh, you know, you've got some momentum and it's really, you know, when it comes to creative output, it's about, you know, it's about putting on the steady pressure, which, you know, we've been, you know, uh, we, which, which, pair, which you, you appear to be doing. So. You know, it's just a case of continuing to hit it. So, yeah. congratulations, um, and I think it's going to keep going. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, it, has been, it has been a quiet few years for me of, of a story here, a story there, just because I had a kid, and you know how that that works. Of I it, do. It stops mm. everything. You 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 put everything on pause while, while the, you have a baby, yeah. and you know, things slowed way down with that. And then, but now that he's older. And um, a little more self-sufficient, I can squeeze those hours in again, and um, just trying to make sure that I'm doing that while I can. And so it has been this this huge output within the past maybe nine, ten months. And I'd like to see it continue, but I really feel like if for some reason I slowed down, I'm happy. I'm happy with with the way the year has turned out. Right. <laughs> Don't take a break, but yeah, that's uh, that's uh, <laughs> you've been prolific. Can you talk to us about the novel? Is that um, something you can tease us with, or I right now I um, it's out on query, okay. and I have one agent that has requested a full, and so he's taking a look at that. And I had one small publisher who um, exhibited. Well, I had two small publishers who exhibited some interest. And the one passed just because it didn't really fit with what he was trying to do. And then the other, I'm still kind of waiting. But um, so I'm kind of up in the air about if and when that will see the light of day. And I have my for my second novel, I'm I'm deep in edits right now. I'm doing first pass through of edits. So that's probably a, a little ways out as well. <laughs> okay. 
uh, can we get can we get a hint as to what the novel's about though? <laughs> I get that's what I was actually shooting for. Sure. I, oh, I got yeah. I'll tell you all about it. Um, so the first novel, Beneath, is actually about a journalist who is assigned a story in a fundamentalist snake handling church in Appalachia. And so when she goes to cover this story, what she uncovers in this town is that what's been what's been slowly building over the years is um, kind of an awakening of, of ancient creature or an, a, an ancient creature called the great worm that has it's it, cyclically come come back to the world several times throughout history but this is just this is the time for awakening and they're they are ushering in destruction and so as she's coming up and she's doing this story and, and encountering these things as they start to unravel um, what she observes at first is what appears to be a demonic possession of a young girl. And so she's wondering if, you know, she's trying to figure out the angle of her story of, you know, Oh, this is a town that's caught up in hysteria. This is a repeat of, you know, your Salem witch trials. Um, the minister is corrupt in his own right because the girl who's possessed, he, he, mm -hmm. who's only 14, 15, he, he, wants her and it's very obvious that he does and so but then as as things get increasingly strange and she's realizing this is this is not possession this is something else altogether this is when things kind of come to a head and there's this final showdown of um people versus these ancient ancient beings that have always been here and, and who wins out so that that's beneath it's very I didn't start it thinking it would be cosmic horror, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely, yeah, it definitely sounds like it has that, has, has that flavor. Uh, that's that old, 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 old time religion. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've noticed, I've noticed in your work that religion often does play, uh, play a, 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 a major, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a theme. Mm -hmm. uh, can you speak at all to like you, your, your background growing up or whether you've had, you know what 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 informs that for you what makes that an important uh, uh uh experience to to fold into your fiction yeah um and this is something that when the chap book came out when when split tongues came out yeah split tongues uh, from dim mm -hmm. shores of that that was i touched on my background probably the heaviest with that so i grew up in a very very strict fundamentalist Pentecostal religion and it was such a huge part of my life throughout my childhood that when I come back to things that I'm frightened of or things that just can't seem to sneak under my skin it's part my that sense of unwavering devotion to some greater power that may or may not exist I come back to that frequently just right. I can reflect back on being a very, very, very young child and being indoctrinated yeah. into a belief system and being so devout to that belief system without even truly understanding it. And so when it comes to writing things that bother me or frighten me or disturb me, it it's always seems to sneak in there. Um, that sense of, unwavering unthinking unquestioning kind of need to connect to, to right. the religion mm -hmm. so i come back to it a lot and you and it, it and, and it comes it comes back powerfully you know that's uh, that's something i th you know i've noticed i think a lot of people have noticed and that's interesting because i don't think we see that a, a lot you know explored with that level of uh that level of uh, uh personal engagement uh, in, in, in horror fiction, particularly in weird fiction, mm -hmm. I've, I, you know, w weird fiction tends to have the sort of, you know, we, we remove ourselves from that aspect of, of human experience, you know, the spiritual, you know, it, it ten at least the more vocal uh, folks who like weird fiction tend to be very proud of their atheism and so on and so forth, you know, which is, which is fine, but it tends to get a little dull uh, and your, you know, your work is not dull. Christy, <laughs> so and 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 it's, and it's for that reason, you know. It's a uh, you know, it's, it's part of why I, why I wanted to put together this anthology because I think that's a 
You know, this is still, you know, we may be working our way out of it, you know, but it's still a, a, a powerful part of human experience that informs who and what we are, you know? So yeah, very interesting stuff. Very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. I'm Definitely. Really, I'm really glad to have, uh, to have the Wicked Shell come upon him in Cthulhu Safa. Uh, all the authors are going to be getting their books very soon. Just, just to let you know. Very exciting. <laughs> the, 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 they are coming, so I, I hope you like what we've done with it. It looks to be it looks to be a very pretty book, so, uh, nice. so far. Yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, the anthology itself uh, drops officially on uh, the, uh, this coming Monday, May twenty third. So it's going to be available in uh, oh, pretty much all places online and in your finer independent bookstores. So yeah, well, maybe we'll go get buy it. Let's go out and buy it. Absolutely. Ask your, and if you can't buy it, go to your library and ask them to order it in because that's, that's, that's good too. You should, we should all be using our libraries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Christy, thanks for taking time out of time out of your evening to have a chat with me. It's been really lovely. Definitely. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.